Our next demo is hands down one of my favorites. It's about dynamically highlighting a specific data series. So in the dynamic series selection tab, you'll see some familiar data. We've got our movie ticket sales by month for four different genres, comedy, thriller, documentary, and romance. And what I wanna do here is build a stacked area chart that dynamically features or highlights whichever genre a user has selected in this data validation cell here in B2. So to do that, we're gonna to need to create two versions of each of these four series. One to define the formatting when that genre is not selected in cell B2, and the second to define the formatting when that genre is selected. So in other words, each of these four genres will have a light filled version and a dark filled version, and only the dark filled version will populate data and be visualized in the chart when that genre is selected here in the dropdown. So to kick things off, I'm gonna grab each of our genres and just paste two versions of each down in a new source data array below. And what we need to do to populate this source data is use some conditional statements that will return data from this array above, but only in cases where this genre has been selected in cell B2. Otherwise, I want to return blank values. So I'll start with comedy equals if the dropdown cell B2 fixed with F4 equals my value in A28, and I'm going to fix just the column there. If that's true, so in other words, if the user has selected comedy, then I want to pull in the value from my comedy row in my source data. I'm going to fix the row here. Otherwise, I want this to be blank, so I'll use two quotation marks and close it out. And then if I drag this on over, looks like it's formatted as currency for some reason, so let's just go ahead and uh, change that to plain number. So there you go. Because comedy is selected, this whole row of data has been populated. If user selected thriller, you see that data disappears. So now I just need one more formula to basically define the opposite. I'm going to copy and paste this one. And basically say if B2, the dropdown, is not equal to A29, then pull in my ticket sale data from above, otherwise blank. So these will all be blank right now because comedy is selected above. But again, if I adjust that dropdown to Thriller, for instance, you see the data just moved from the selected row to the non-selected row. And now we just need to repeat the process for the other three genres. And I'm going to borrow the formulas that I just wrote for comedy and paste them in each of the other three cases. And all I need to do for Thriller, for instance, in row 30, I can press F2 to drill into the formula. All I need to do is drag that reference down to the Thriller line in both of these cases. And there you go, I can grab the Thriller rows, drag them all the way out to December. And as you can see, now that Thriller is selected in cell B2, the top row of Thriller data is populated and the bottom row returns nothing. So similar case with documentary, drag it down to the documentary sales in both cases. And then romance will be the value in B26. Now I can drag these last four all the way out. And there you go. So I've created a new source data array by duplicating the data for each genre and creating a rule where the data will only populate if that particular genre is selected by the user in cell B2. So one more example, if we go to romance, you'll see the deselected version of each of the other genres is populating, but the selected version, the top row for romance is now populating. So this is the data set that we'll now use to build our stacked area, and it will be built based on all eight of these data series, even though only four will be visible at one time. So let's go ahead and insert in our line options, a stacked area, and we can select the data and just get rid of what Excel tried to add. And now I can add my first series. And in this case, I'm gonna give it custom names just to make it clear when we're formatting later. So this is going to be my first series, which is the top row of my comedy data. So I'm going to call it comedy with an S for selected. 
values will be B28 through M28. Okay, and my horizontal labels will be January through December. Kind of tough to see, but it goes through M22. And let me just drag this out of the way to make this a little bit easier. I'm going to go back into select data. Okay, so I've got my comedy selected row. The second row is comedy D for D selected. Those values live right here. You press OK. The horizontal values every time are going to be the same months right there in row 22. Now I'm going to repeat this process for each series. So thriller selected is my top thriller row. My horizontal labels are my months. And thriller deselected is my second thriller row. And my x values are my months. You can see it's added that in. Adding the third one. Doc selected, my top documentary row. Doc deselected, it's my second documentary row. And you can see we're slowly building out each slice of our area chart here. Here's romance selected. And this is the one that currently has data because that's what our data validation cell is currently reflecting. And finally, romance deselected, which is the last row in our array right here. OK, so there you have it. We've built out our stacked area. As you can see, only four series are being shown because only four of the eight rows in this raw dynamic source array currently contain data. And in fact, only four ever will at one time. So now let's customize the fill options for each of the eight possible series. So we can right click Format Data Series. And this is where this drop down is incredibly helpful because it lists all eight here. And if I were to try to right click on each of the individual series, there's no way to isolate and click on any of the four that are currently blank. So I'm going to kind of use this as my control panel here. So let's just go down the list, top to bottom, starting with comedy. And why don't we just pick a color that comedy will represent, whether it's selected or deselected. So I'll give it a solid fill. And why don't we say comedy is shades of blue. So when comedy is selected, I want to give it a bright blue color. And then we'll just go right down the line. When comedy is deselected, let's give it a lighter shade of blue. Let's actually do the lightest shade we can. And then we'll go to Thriller. When Thriller is selected, when we make Thriller orange, and when Thriller is deselected, very, very light shade of orange. Moving on to Documentary. When documentary is selected, let's have it be yellow. And when documentary is deselected, lighter shade of yellow. And then we get to romance. Let's make romance green. And when it's deselected, it'll be a lighter green. So now we press OK. And as you can see, since three of the four series that are being shown here are not selected in cell B2, we see the light filled version of those series. And the only series that's showing its darker version is romance, which is the one selected. So if we've done our job correctly, it means that as a user changes the value in this dropdown in B2, it should dynamically highlight just that one series and revert all the other three series back to their lighter filled version. And there you go. So there's comedy, thriller, documentary, and romance. How cool is that? So finally, we can just do a little bit of formatting here. Let's give it a chart title above the chart. We'll call it ticket sales by month. And then at this point, it's really easy to just copy and paste this, go into our chart tools. Maybe we want to change it to 100% stack column instead. 
you know, or we can format that series, shrink the gap down, something like that, and then change the title to percent of ticket sales by month, since now we're looking at 100% stacked. And both will act exactly the same. So really just a stylistic choice. But there you have it. Really unique custom formatting rule that you can apply to your charts and graphs to really help bring things to life.